And now let's go to lab two. In this lab, we'll use analog on digital I.O. Analog input is important to connect sensors, for example, a light sensor or a pressure sensor. You can connect this kind of sensor directly to the board. One pin, analog zero, the other pin, ground. You can connect sensors directly on the Galileo or Edison boards, but it's not really convenient. So usually we would use what we call a breadboard. On this small breadboard, the five cables that are uh, connected to the breadboard are in fact connected together. In this lab, I will use an analog input on a digital output. The analog input is a light sensor or a pressure sensor. The digital output is just a LED, switch on or off. So you need four jumper cables, one photoresistor, one LED, one resistor, one breadboard, and connect everything just like shown on the drawing. OK, go to the folder 2, LED sensor, then Make clean to remove the old binaries and make to compile new binaries. Then you can run get analog binary. It will read input from analog zero. While the software is running, you can play with the sensor. If it's a pressure sensor, just try different levels of pressure. And if it's a light sensor, just try to hide the sensor with your fingers. You can stop the software with Ctrl C. OK, let's look at the code corresponding to this get analog binary. First, we have to use MHA library. Define a context. Initialize the input we selected, here analog zero, and close the context. We define here analog zero, and all you have to do is use the read function to get the value from analog zero. And now let's go to the second part of the lab where we try to blink a LED connected to the digital output 7. Note that in this case we added a resistor to protect the LED. Without the resistor it would work but the LED would burn after some time. Let's look at the code. Very similar, we have to use MHA library. We have a context. We initialize the digital pin 7. And all we have to do is write 0 or 1 to this GPIO to enable or disable the pin 7. It will switch on or off the LED. And now let's plug the two bits of code together. We want to have a software that will read analog inputs and will switch on or off the LED depending on the value of the sensor. And now let's look at the code. Um, as expected, it is just a copy-paste of the two previous codes together and with a bit of logic with an if statement based on a threshold. So it's nothing mysterious. If the threshold in the source code does not work for you or for your sensor, you can just edit and recompile with make. It will work.
But if you're interested in the value from the sensor in terms of uh, calibrated units, for example, lux, you'll have to go back to the international system definition of lux, understand what 100 lux means, what 500 lux means, uh, define some test, and calibrate your sensor, because each sensor is different. Now, if we run the same code on Intel Edison with the pressure sensor, it works but you notice that the lower value is a bit erratic. Sometimes it's 70, sometimes it's 150, with no clear reason. So something is happening on the lower range of the sensor. Now, if you take a sensor that used to work very well with Galileo, like the light sensor, uh, you'll notice that it won't work at all with Edison, for no reason at all. It's analog zero, and uh, all you get is a uh, random noise around a certain value. It won't even move when you change the light information in front of the sensor. So something wrong is happening. You can solve this problem by wiring differently your sensor and adding a resistor. Okay, in this lab, we've seen how to get data from analog sensors and how to input orders to a digital output. It looks a bit difficult at first, but you now have the knowledge to interact with any sensor, cheap one, professional ones. They are all the same. For example, let's look at the alpha sensor uh, we have in front of us. It's a professional sensor uh, measuring a certain kind of pollution and you have different inputs but they are all analog and as far as your software is concerned reading data from this professional sensor or from the very basic light sensor that we've seen in the lab is exactly the same. The way you normalize the data from this alpha sensor compared to the light sensor of course is different and the algorithm you will run on this pollution data is totally different but that's your project.